Hey everybody, welcome back for another Slabber Day Saturday. Today we got a wormy soft maple. I don't know how wormy it is, but I do know it's a soft maple. So let's get into it. Okay, so why is this called wormy soft maple? It's also called ambrosia maple, but why? Basically, there's a beetle called the ambrosia beetle, you guessed it, gets in there behind the bark and actually burrows a tiny little hole through the wood. Doesn't ruin the wood, but you do get a stain mark where that, that little tiny hole is, which fortunately adds character to your plain old maple. So that's why it's called wormy soft maple or also ambrosia maple after the ambrosia beetle. Come in, check out this, the end of the log. It's really weird how this one's cut off because this one's actually cut off with a harvester and the blade isn't big enough to cut the whole tree. So they actually go in from one side. You can see the cuts here of the circular saw blade with the big machine grabbing it. And then they go to the opposite side of the tree and they go in as far as they can, they grab it and they probably just pushed this entire tree over. So you can see all these fibers are all broken off. Uh, not the best way to uh, take down a tree, but it does get the job done. So we're going to be cleaning up the end first, cutting it nice and straight uh, with the chainsaw. So I'm going to do that now. So from the end of the log, we couldn't actually tell the color, the size of the heart, or if there is any of that staining from the ambrosia beetle. But let's check it out. Splash a little water on here. So what you're seeing here, these pointy marks are that staining from the ambrosia beetle. So it's got a good amount in there. It's got a large heart, a lot of color, a lot of uniqueness. And uh, wow, this was a fast growing tree. We're talking almost half an inch in a year right here. That's pretty impressive. So we're gonna uh, pick it up with the telehandler. We're gonna get it onto the sawmill. We're gonna cut some slabs. All right, the log is fully secured here on our bunks with those wedges. We just tap them in with a hammer and uh, screw it down. As you saw, we love the telehandler because it's very simple to uh, align the log. You're not necessarily always gonna be perfectly straight on the forks, and I was angled when I picked the log up so I could boom in. We basically got the one end secured down there exactly where we wanted it, and we boomed in, we lifted up this end very lightly, and we pulled it back, and we got it nice and straight with the sawmill. That way we're able to have our blade guides, blade guide one, blade guide two, in as tight as possible to the log, and they are adjustable. I can just loosen it here, and this one here I do need to bump out couple of inches and then lock her down. We've already tensioned the blade. This is an old blade from the previous log, but as you already know, if you're not new here, I'm going to make the first cut. We're going to see how it is. If it's nice, we'll keep cutting with it, but we'll check along the way. If it's a horrible, horrible cut, we'll just throw the towel in folks. It'll be the end of the video. We're done. No, no, we'll, we'll put a fresh blade on. Don't worry. Let's see what's inside here. Dun, 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 dun. Sweet. Yeah, we're gonna have some really nice color. Some nice ambrosia. Very slight bit of spalting. Not much spalting at all. This is pretty much a brand new log. Oh, you can see the ambrosia down here. It looks real nice. Let me turn this. It's really nice when now uh, you get the ambrosia in the white, white maple because you can see the streak really well. And you can actually see the tiny little hole that ambrosia beetle makes. So what we're looking at here is the white is the sapwood of the maple tree and this uh, brownish, pinkish, greenish, brownish, did I say that, is the heart of the tree. So we're just getting into that and then we have these streaks that are caused by the ambrosia beetle. We're going to take the waste cut away and we're going to keep on cutting. I didn't mention this but we're cutting this into 10 quarter slabs, two and a half inches thick. So let's keep on going. Looks like a nice flat cut, very happy with that. Thank you Samel. 
I just wanted to say thanks to everyone that's tuning in on a Saturday, or it could be any day I suppose that you're watching this video. If you're new to our channel, we do a Slabber Day Saturday where we use one of our sawmills to cut up some beautiful lumber. And if you're hanging around and you've seen a bunch of these videos, really gotta say thanks for watching it. And if you haven't already guys, smash that like button. It's one thing that you can do to help share our channel and hopefully we can build our audience. Now let's get down to the meat and potatoes of our sawmill. This is a wide slabber, as you can see, it can do 72 inches in total width. We had it custom made for us locally, and uh, it's just been a great sawmill for us. We run a uh, two inch wide, 20 foot, eight inch long sawmill blade, and it's a bandsaw blade, so it's a very low kerf. So it doesn't produce very much sawdust, which is uh, cuts down on the waste. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go. Some glamour shots, folks. We do get asked in virtually every single video and I get DM'd, you know, at least once a week, why do we put water on the slabs? And we just do that to kind of show off the natural color of how it's gonna look when it's finished. Ooh, look at that slide by the telehandler. That's one reason we love this thing. Nice to see some solid lumber for once. <laughs> Seems like we've been cutting some punky stuff lately. That is a beauty right there. All right, let's so keep on going. Ooh, we hit something funny there. See those sparks? Did you guys notice that? Well, you can rewind a little bit, check it out. There were definitely some sparks there, dull in the blade. This was a wide, wide uh, log. This one was really nice, up to 40 inches at the top side there where the crotch was. <laughs> and uh, a very, very consistent 34, 36 the rest of the way. So yeah, it's definitely gonna make some beautiful tables. <laughs> Look at that guy go cleaning off the sawdust. And yeah, we're getting a little creative with the uh, water popping. As you notice, we've done it in every video. But you gotta admit, it really shows off what the lumber truly looks like. And it's very nice, it was a very, very hot day. As you see, we have a little lean-to, which had to be super, super tall to accommodate our sawmill, and we just have it on a concrete pad. This was me thinking this would be like a really artsy, cool shot. Now that I'm watching it, eh, you know, well, you know, actually, at the end there, I think it worked out pretty well. What do you guys think? This log did truly have some really nice grain in it. I was really happy that it had a big heart. So there's a lot of color there, a lot of character. Uh, it was very, very solid as well. Hardly any defect in it. Leave you with those glamour shots. Those are beauties. So I'm calculating the board footage. I'm gonna get the average width. I've marked five width measurements on here. I add them all together. I divide it by five. I'm gonna multiply it by the length, 140 inches. Our thickness is 2.5. So we're gonna also multiply it by 2.5. I get a big, huge number that I don't care about. I'm gonna divide it by 144. And that's gonna give me 80 board feet in this slab. So we're averaging, I think the smallest slab was around 60. The biggest slab was around 90 board feet out of this log and we got about nine slabs. She was a big one, 80 board feet. I do an 80 and we do a rectangle, that way we know what that means. All right, Andy and I were just commenting on, this is actually the waste cut that we're going to be getting rid of. And well, what can something like this be used for? We could salvage it, put it on the wood miser, cut some more boards. Uh, he talked about some really cool projects he saw online that people build with this kind of stuff. And I also said, uh, you can turn some bowls or platters out of this. Uh, unfortunately and fortunately, we do need this as firewood. So a lot of cool stuff does get tossed in our firewood pile. Uh, if you're local and once COVID restrictions get lifted a little bit, if you're a bowl turner, please, please come to my firewood pile. We'll hook you up. We'll hook you up. I don't know if I just opened Pandora's box and I'm just gonna be like, wood turners are just gonna be, it's gonna be like the, that zombie movie where they're like all running after you, but it'll be wood turners for my firewood pile. Anyways, this is our waste cut. It's beautiful. It deserves a little water pop. Let's, oh yeah. And especially the outside cut on an ambrosia maple because there's almost no heartwood. The, uh, the ambrosia beetle stains really, really get highlighted. So you can see clearly ambrosia beetle, little hole there, hole there hole there and it causes the streak. So cool. 
Well, there we have it, folks. Another Slabber Day Saturday has come and gone. One log. Sometimes we do more than one log. But one log today, that's for sure, sliced into 10 beautiful slabs. These are all stunning, really, really solid, really beautiful lumber. The sawmill uh, cut fantastic. Shout out to Lennox Sawmill Blades. That's who we use for sawmill blades. I get asked a lot. So uh, if you want to know what blade I use, you have to watch every Saturday till the end of the video when I mention the name, just like I did. And you know what? Uh, it's Saturday. Thank you everyone for tuning in. We really appreciate all the kind comments as well as suggestions along the way. What you got to do for us, all we ask, it helps share our channel, helps build our audience and it helps support us. All you got to do is smash that like button. You must have liked the video if you watched till the end. And if you didn't, smash that like button anyways. It helps us out. Come on. Come on. Do it. I dare you. I dare you. Uh, all right. All right. That's it, folks. We're done. The video's done. Slabber day's over. It's lunchtime. It's hot. And you got lots to do. So get on with your Saturday, folks. Make it a great one. <laughs>